Well, my history with this school is I came here four years ago. So I'm just starting now my fourth year here at J.O. Wilson. Um, and one interesting fact about the school is we were founded in 1961. And I'm only the sixth principal since 1961. So we've had a really stable educational administration here. Our vision for this school is a place where um, our students learn mathematical um, reading and writing skills. But the most important thing is that they're able to apply those skills to solve problems that are new and innovative. Um, we are also building a school here where the classrooms are warm and inviting and where they reflect our students' cultural values and their identities. And finally, we're really trying to build a school where the adults nurture a mindset of growth, both for our students and also for our own professional learning. So back in 2014, when we were still giving the DC CAS as the district's assessment tool, we were at 50% proficiency in reading and math. Um, now we're using the PARC, which is reflective of the Common Core expectations, which are much harder. And so this past year, we were at 34% um, in math and 25% proficiency in reading. Um, we're pretty proud of those scores. We're even with the district's average in reading, and we're outperforming the district average in math. Um, we have directed a lot of our resources towards supporting our students, and one of our biggest focuses has been on writing. Um, and we're really proud of the writing that our children are doing. They're coming out of first grade now writing a three-paragraph essay. So I think that we'll start to see that ability to explain their thoughts in writing and also to explain their thinking in math really boost their scores. Um, it's also important for us to meet the needs of all of our students. So while we have students that are challenged, we also have students that are proficient and above grade level. And we're one of a few schools in the District of Columbia that runs a school-wide enrichment model program. And that program is designed to um, enrich and accelerate students who are performing at or above grade level. Yes, I believe I am personally responsible for the academic growth of our students. That is my primary responsibility besides keeping the children safe in the building. And I love that aspect of my work. I try to be the lead learner in the building and I'm always studying new ways to support our teachers and our children. Our academic expectations for our students is that they will be at least proficient at grade level. And we'd really like to see our students performing above grade level. Um, along the way, it's our job to support our students in gaining the skills in math, reading, and writing that they need for that achievement. But it is also our job to provide them with a diverse and stimulating and rigorous set of experiences, both inside the classroom and outside the classroom. We believe that music, art, dance, PE, are just as important to our students' growth and development as are the traditional core subjects. I believe the most important factor in student achievement is hard work, um, absolutely hands down. We believe all of our children have natural intelligence and it's up to us to help them realize their gifts. It's also up to us to help teach them how to work hard and persevere. Um, we work a lot on this school in mindset, both the mindset of the adults um, about making sure that children are praised for effort um, as opposed to being smart. And we work a lot on being able to give and accept feedback. And so there's a story that I go around and read to the classes that's called Thanks for the Feedback. And it's all about how a child improves their skills by listening to the feedback that they're getting from their teachers and their peers and incorporating that. Um, we keep track of how our students are doing academically throughout the year using all the recommended DC public schools interim testing benchmarks, um, including ANET, including testing reading. Um, we do writing samples quarterly so we can track their growth in writing and students keep a writing portfolio. Um, and finally, we use something called exit tickets. When a child is just leaving their math class or their reading class, we'll ask a, the, a teacher will ask one powerful question, and the students will fill that out. And we can tell from those results how much the students understood about their instruction, and then that's what the teachers use to adjust their instruction the next day. Our behavioral expectations for our students really boils down to one word, and that word is respect. If you think about it, um, 
you can describe how you should be in an environment if you're always thinking about how are you respecting yourself, your community, um, the environment, your materials, um, and your peers. So we really just stress respect here, and we try to talk to the children about that context and all of their behavior. We enforce rules by putting some systems and structures into place that support student behavior. For example, during the first six weeks of school, we practice really intensely the routines and the rules and the procedures that we're going to be following in the school to equip the kids to know what is the right thing to do. We also use some aspects of responsive classroom, including morning meeting and closing meeting. And that's really helpful because it develops a classroom environment that is supportive of the students solving their own conflicts within their own environment. We reward good behavior first by monitoring behavior and reinforcing to the children what the behavior is that we're looking for. We use a system called Classroom Dojo, and the students have a little icon and they earn points, and we track those points over a two-week period. And for the students that meet their goal, they get to participate in a special behavior incentive. It could be a dance, it could be an ice cream social. Um, and about 93% of our children earn those incentives every two weeks. Yes, I absolutely believe I'm responsible for the professional development of my teachers. Um, it's one of my main responsibilities, and I love that part of my work very much. Um, I do things like I read in the field extensively. So this year we have a book that we're studying for math, for our math teachers, and a reading book for our reading teachers. And I read both of those books over the summer, sort of try to pull together the salient points for the teachers. I can also go into classrooms and model different um, instructional methodologies that I'd like them to try. And I try to uh, really reinforce with them right now, this year, one of our focuses is on providing the children an exemplar or a model for what we want them to do. So if we want them to write an essay, then I have the teachers working on write, you know, writing their own essay as a model for the kids to follow. And then using a rubric, we have the children sort of rate themselves, and the children are then driving their own growth. So that's just one example of the kind of professional development I do with my teachers. If we have a teacher vacancy, we have a lot of avenues to follow to try to get the right person in the position. DCPS offers us resumes and videos that we can watch, and I, I do all that screening myself, and I typically make the first call to our potential candidates. We've also had a lot of success reaching out through personal networks. I have over 25 years experience in education, and we have a lot of talented staff on board already. And so frequently, one of us will reach out to people that we know, and that's been a really strong way for us to recruit excellent candidates. I evaluate my teachers and hold them accountable for student growth by using DC Public Schools evaluation system, which is called IMPACT. IMPACT has um, different aspects of it, so it's not just one way that we evaluate teachers. One of the ways is through classroom observation, but there are also other avenues. For example, they set goals for their student achievement, and part of their evaluation comes back as how well did their students meet those goals for achievement. And then finally, the last piece of it is their commitment to the school community. So it's a lot of other things teachers do besides teach in the classroom. So do they attend PTA meetings? Do they support math or literacy nights? Um, do they work with children after school and tutoring? All of those things feed into a teacher's evaluation. We engage uh, parents in their child's education through a lot of different methods in our school. Uh, first and foremost, we are partners with Flamboyant Foundation, and that has been a wonderful growth area for us. We now do home visits, and last year over 80% of our families received a home visit. Um, we focus on getting parents in for parent-teacher conferences, and the focus of those conferences, it's not just saying, okay, this is how your child is doing. We really focus on, okay, this is how your child's doing, and this is how you can help support their achievement at home. Um, we also have a very active PTA, and a lot of our families now, we have new ambassadors, and so families are reaching out to one another and bringing folks into the school. Um, and also we have open houses, so we hope that you will stop by and see us at an open house. I am available to talk to parents whenever they need me. I have a completely open door policy. 
Um, if someone comes in and it's an emergency or it's urgent, they will always get to speak with administration just by walking in the door. Um, also, many of my parents have my cell phone number. And sometimes we're even checking in, texting one another if we're checking on the progress that a student's making. Um, also, we do monthly principal's coffees. So every first Friday of the month at 830, you can meet me for coffee and donuts. Um, there's usually a topic to that meeting. So it might be about our flamboyant work. It could be about our math instruction. But then the second half of it is just purely open questions and answers. And parents talk to me about their experiences in the school. And I listen. And I use a lot of that feedback as we try to improve our work.